I'm in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 34. Then King Jesus will say to those on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Don't you want our God and Savior Jesus Christ to say that to you alone in your life right now? Don't you want him to be with you in love and absolute infatuation about who you are as his child? You being infatuated with him and not him you. But at the same time, we always think that. We always think that God is infatuated with us and that he is preparing a place just for us. But it's for all who have accepted Jesus Christ as living God, Savior, and Creator alone. So yes, I am infatuated with Jesus Christ, my God and Savior alone, because He is pure, holy, living God deity all alone. His kingdom is prepared for me and so many in this world right now, as well as from this moment past, all the way up until the return of God Jesus in the twinkling of an eye, and then we will be at rest forever. Can you believe that? At rest forever. No sin, no immorality, no thinking that's going to be bad or keeping us in debt or depressed, down, suppressed, hanging in there from one second to the next, from one day to the next, going into another day and another and another, and nothing seems to ever change for us in our life, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially. If you want to get your needs met right now, then behave in the absolute practicality about who Jesus Christ is as living God, Savior, and Creator alone, all for you and anyone and everyone on this world right now. Yes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God. He was himself along with God, God Jehovah, so much that God Jesus said, can I do anything here on this world in preparation for all to be absolutely in the kingdom of heaven forever. And God Jehovah said, absolutely. And they were thinking together at the same time. It wasn't just Christ God Jesus, who was not known to us at that moment in time, saying that to his he heavenly father, God Jehovah. It was them thinking together. And they thought these things together. And the absolute value of who they are with the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, became in oneness with each of them, saying this to each other. Should we do something well in preparation? Of course we can and we will. And they did. Remember, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. That is the preparation in the beginning of the book of John that tells us that God already had a plan. And yes, He is in the presence of three. Almighty God, Jehovah, Almighty God, Jesus, and Almighty, the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. Listen to your heart. Know that no one else in this world from this time forward or from this moment past can ever bring what Jesus Christ, our God and Savior all alone, has begotten unto himself to be here as living God, Savior, and Creator alone, and still knowing he is infinite God at the same time while he was here in this world, man himself in the flesh, but God in spirit. Take that into your thought process for just a bit. Knowing he was and is infinite God forever with us, but still infinite God all alone with his heavenly father, God Jehovah, and the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. Yes, they made it well prepared for me and for you and all in this world from the beginning of mankind's creation up until the return of God Jesus, which no man knows himself, only God Jehovah, the Heavenly Father, who is the heavenliness of each and every one of us, knowing he is in favorment of all of his children here in this world all at the same time. But if no one wants to recognize his only begotten Son as Jesus Christ, the living God, Savior, and King and Messiah of this world, throughout eternity because he did die on the cross for the world's sins because we were here knowing we could not be saved with him in heaven. How could we know the things in heaven that God Jesus knew then? We couldn't. There's no conversation. There's no communication. But there were people out there sacrificing for God to say, I forgive you of your sins. Now remember, all of these things were in the beginning of the Old Testament and God promised them a Savior, a Messiah. 
He promised them hope, living life in the word. And they kept that in their heart as close as they could and tried to understand it the best that they could. <clears throat> Remember, when I'm here saying these things, it's absolutely the factual facts in the Bible, the word of God all alone. There is no other. Read the book, the Bible. The word is in the Bible to teach us all of us here in this world right now and among us right now we have to be believing and knowing that jesus christ is our only true living god god deity alone because he is it says so in the bible regardless of what you say or think or believe and your faith has no doubt that god does not exist to you or that jesus christ is not god with great god jehovah then remember this in the word, there is the truth and the beginning and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So who was the word? Who was that who dwelt among us? Because in the Bible, it structures itself around God, Jesus, in holding him, in holding him to the truth and the worthiness of who he is and was as the word who became flesh and dwelt among us. Go to 1 John 5, 7. It says this, there are three who bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and they are one. We all know already that God Jehovah is God. So if they bear witness in heaven as one living God, God all alone, then they are still our one only, our one and only living God, Savior, and Creator all alone. In the togetherness of who they are, that is in the presence of three by name alone. Christ God, Je uh, God Jehovah, Christ God Jesus, and God the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. Go back to the book of John. Read in the chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3, and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He in the beginning was with God. Separate. Separate in the presence of who they were, the Word and God, but yet still living God. Drop down to verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. There is no question about who the word is. The word is God. And in the Bible, it says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for the world's sins, that whoever should believe on him shall have eternal life, everlasting everlasting life. If you want to know more about Christ God Jesus with you personally, get busy in your own personal life. Read the book of life. Read the Bible alone. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what you think or how you feel, bring your faith into your heart, mind, soul, and spirit all at the same time. And regardless of anyone else around you, you start saying and stating the facts in the Bible, the word of the living God. Almighty God, Jesus, Almighty God, Jehovah, and Almighty the God, the Holy Spirit, who is God with us right now, the holiness of who they all are. I want people to know that no matter what, when I'm saying these things, the absolute fact and factual events in my life have occurred many times over. I have trusted in my God, Savior, and Creator alone to tell you this. I have not spent much time with myself all by myself lately. In the past year, I have known myself to be more and more and more with Jesus Christ God, praising Him, worshiping Him, saying sermons, doing some writing, just being with Him in faith, praising Him, following Him, and praising and praying for many in this world to be saved. <clears throat> Not everyone on this world is going to be saved, but I pray for everyone in this world <clears throat> as much as I can. And when I'm here and God gives me specific faces or places or people, then I pray for them or that area in this world. I know that many people in this world right now do this. It's not a combination of me all by myself and God Jesus with God Jehovah and the holiness of who they all are all with me alone. No, it's never been accepting to me like that at all. It says in the Bible, when I'm here with you, God Jesus, I wanna be with many, but at the same time, how can I do that? It doesn't state it like that exactly, but when I'm thinking these things, when I'm reading the scriptures, I'm saying to myself, I'm reading your word, and when you say, go out and share the good news, that includes me, right up until the, in, the return of God Jesus, if I'm still here. If I'm not, I do that until I am no longer here, and so should you. How can you do that? Pray for people around you. Make a praise, honor, worship time frame for 
your God and Savior, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, to say daily, thank you, God Jesus, for dying on the cross for the world's sins. I'm going to pray for those things you want me to pray for and the people in this world and America right now, as well as I'm going to follow you as Christ God Jesus all alone, because you are the only begotten Son, the Son of God Jehovah, who was God himself in the flesh, who did die on the cross for the world's sins, and was risen on the third day <clears throat> from the dead. If anything else in the Bible states anything else other than what I just said, then I'm not reading the right book, the book of eternal life called the Bible. If it is stated in the Bible over and over and over again that Jesus Christ was here as God himself in the flesh, who was God of glory, the Messiah, the Master, the King, the Redeemer, the Creator of all. And it doesn't say that exactly all of the time, all the way through. But it says it from the beginning in the Old Testament, throughout the whole Bible, in scriptures. It talks about God. It talks about the Word. It, it talks about Jesus Christ, our God and Savior all alone, who is right here with each and every one of us in this world right now. He is the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who is God, God with us, Almighty. He is God Almighty along with us right now because Jesus sent him. He spent some time with his disciples and he told them this, if you want to know more about who I am, then spend more time with me. And so they did. And they actually did in the flesh when he was there with them. How awesome is that to think about? Now we have to consider everything that has been done and the time spent reading and practicing God's word, memorizing scriptures, and believing on him who came over 2,000 years ago, and still believing without a doubt that we know we are saved by Jesus Christ, our God, Savior, King, Creator, all alone, and the Master and Savior and Redeemer of all in this world, who is King of all, no matter what you say, no matter what you think, he is the only true living God King all alone. There is no other. There is no other King or person person ever to worship in this world. Nothing, no one. We also, we also have to put a matter of fact in our heart, mind, spirit, and soul that there is no person in this world who's going to stand up sometime in the future, right before the beginning of all of these things going on in our life right now, that's not caused by tribulation, but caused by mankind himself. Is there a word of truth in the conversation that I have with my God, Savior, and Jesus every single day, throughout the whole day, and sometimes all night long or during the night, some just a little bit, but then it spins more and more hours into the morning. Yes, it is, it is our God, Savior, and Creator alone. Many people do this. Many people say Jesus Christ is living God, Savior, and Creator alone. And for those of us, and for those of many who are just now beginning to come into the enlightenment, in the abs and the absolute likeness of who Jesus Christ is, as God, Savior, cre uh, King, and Creator all alone, they are now beginning to see that God's Word is in the private knowing of who He is as God alone. <clears throat> it's not about me telling you who He is, because in Romans 12, 3, it says this, For God has given to each man the measure of faith. So what about that scripture? It means simply this, that when you are created by Almighty God's hand alone, that you have been in knowing us from the time you have been born into this world, who He is as God and Creator all alone. At that moment in time when you are very tiny and little, you have not been taught that he is create uh, that he is God and Savior alone, or even Creator. Perhaps your family hasn't told you that. I've told as many as I can, including my kids, as much as I could during the time I was raising them. It was never enough. It never can be. It never will be. But at the same time, I have the time still left. God has told me I have time left in this world to still be with my children, their wives, and their children. And I hope sometime in the future when they grow up, their husbands and wives and children. Remember, God is here for the fantastic knowing that he is God, living, infant God, infinite God alone. If you want to know more about me, forget about it. Know more about Jesus Christ, our God and Savior alone. He is infinite God all alone. I say those things he wants me to say because I'm doing this because I want to. I want to be with Christ God, Jesus, home in heaven forever, throughout eternity. No more sadness, no more death, no more disease, no more old age. Infinity with God, Jesus, in the, whole, in the wholeness and holiness of who we will be with him. Because in the Bible right now, it already states, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So remember, when we are here right now, do the best you can. And then give the rest 
or all to God, Jesus. There's always room for improvement. So I say that daily. Thank you, God, Jesus, for a brand new day. Thank you for helping me to do my best in all areas of my life, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and yes, financially. Thank you, God, Jesus, that at the end of the day, you will take my best from the whole day and improve upon it. I'm going to do my best and give you the rest so you can improve on it. And the next day I start over again. So he has given me back what I did yesterday to improve what I didn't do so well yesterday. So praise God Jesus for that. And thank you God Jesus for telling me those things. And thank you for improving me in all areas of my life because I want to. And you should too. It's not an easy thing to do to stay out of a situation where someone's arguing around you about a political idea or a fanfare idea that just simply blows up in everybody's faces and it doesn't even really matter anyway in the end. Because what matters is people coming together as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, God our Savior and Creator all alone. That's the best part about being with God Jesus so much that I have changed my heart, mind, thinking, and attitude, and anger and temper and impatience is going away quite quickly. I need improvement on that. I want to be with my family as much as I can, while I can, but at the same time, if I'm not, I'm still praying for them. When God brings them to my heart and my mind, I pray for them, and whatever need they might have, God gives me the words. Always pray and ask all prayers in and through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. He is here with us now, and his name is the Holy Spirit, and his name first is God. We have to remember in the book, in the Bible, the book of life, it says to pray and talk through the Holy Spirit the best you can. Remember to ask Christ God Jesus for all of the words from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. Get to know him. And when he gives you those words, when you pray and ask that prayer, pray and ask that in Jesus Christ, God's name alone, then start praying for whatever person or reason you are praying for yourself. When you are finished with that prayer, remember to ask God Jesus to help you to know when there's a beginning, a middle, and an ending so that when you are finished praying for whatever reason or whoever you are praying for, you can say this, and I pray and ask this all in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. I pray that sometime in the future, I'm going to hear a pastor pray for his congregation one-on-one, -on -one, but yet all together at the same time through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who is God with each and every one of us right now. The holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, is with each and every one of us as strong as Almighty God, Jehovah, and Jesus wants to give to us for the absolute forever forgiveness He has blessed us with throughout eternity from this moment forward. And He gives us, He gives us the strength and the attitude and the mindful set to know who He is as living God, Savior, and Creator alone so much that when we pray, we know it's from God the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. And it is a different prayer said. You can recognize it. I have recognized it through a few words or a sentence in people around me from the past. And it's been a while. It's been years. I had one person say one word in a sentence. And I told myself while I was sitting there in the congregation, and it was a pastor, I said, that one word was from you, God, Jesus. I could tell it was the Holy Spirit told me. That one word he said was from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. So I pray that that pastor will have many words to say in sentences, paragraphs, throughout a whole sermon and beyond. And many more pastors in this area, in America, and around this world, as well as people. We don't have to be a pastorizing person or an evangelist or someone that is out there as a, a great person of knowledge in God's word to know things about Christ God Jesus through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit who is God with us now, we can be just us. I'm just me. I don't do much, but I do praise God every single day a lot. I want to. I desire to. I've done this for quite some time now, and I'm very proud of that. For over 20 years now, I have been blessed and absolutely walking in God's grace, and He has blessed me since I have been born into this world, and I've had great family members, great parents, great sister, and family members come into our family, and new ones, and so on, and I love the growth in our family. Our son is now married. We have a beautiful grandson. Our other son is still working, but still they are blessed. They are blessed with work. They are blessed with their heart and mind, soul, and spirit being saved through the grace and the blood shed by Jesus Christ, our God, Savior, and Creator all alone. That is the most important thing you should be praying about for yourself, your husband, your wife, your sons, your daughters, your son-in-laws, your daughter-in-laws, and your grandchildren. 
and future grandchildren and your nieces and nephews, your brothers and sisters and their husbands and wives, all around you in your family and in their family too. Remember, it is important to pray for everyone that you can possibly pray for in your family if you know that they don't have that graced, blessed moment in time in their life to know Christ God Jesus as living God, Savior, and Creator alone. It is so important that we give the scriptures from the Bible to them to help them to believe and solidify their faith going towards Almighty God, Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to remember that when we say Jesus Christ is the only Son of God who was God Himself in the flesh, who did die on the cross for the world's sins, and was risen from the dead on the third day, that says something. But at the same time, it's not a full scripture. So remember, John 3, 16 says it the best, as well as many scriptures do. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, God, Savior, and Redeemer alone. It doesn't say that. For God so loved the world, he gave his only beloved son to die on the cross for the world's sins, so that all who believe on him shall have everlasting life. I just like to say it so many times that I inputted that. So that's the way it's supposed to be said in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for the world's sins so that whoever believes on him shall have everlasting life. That's the whole scripture. Pretty close. Remember, every single time I'm here, I say things in my heart about Christ God Jesus. You will never hear me say anything about God Jesus not being God with God Jehovah and the holiness of who they all are, saying just simply the Holy Spirit. I will say it different because God Jesus great God Jehovah has him put that into my heart. So I will say these things. If I say an extra line or two in a scripture, I will change it back to the original because sometimes I become so excited about who Jesus Christ is as God, Savior, and Creator alone. I say it that way because I say his name so much in my heart all day long, most of the night, and then I do it again day after day, and it has increased. So I'm trying to remember strictly what the scriptures are. John 3, 16, go back and read it. Remember, Romans 12, 2, excuse me, Romans 12, 3, for God has given to each man the measure of faith. There is no excuse to go beyond your own way of thinking, knowing that your heart is trying to set your mind full way of thinking into a direction of going towards God in faith about who he is, as living God, Savior, and creator alone, but infinite God first. He prepared a plan for you and me and all in this world. From the beginning of time, he created Adam and Eve. You have to know that when Jesus Christ was here, every single time he was here saying something about himself, he did not say straight out, loudly, I'm God and I'm here. He just simply said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I and my Father are one. Remember that the example that he set before his disciples and many of those people in front of him that he spoke about to, about the word of God and the scrolls at that time, was from heaven. He lifted himself up enough to say the things that he needed to say outside of the scrolls because he was about to break the bonds or the, the chains of life that held us back from being able to be capable of being in heaven with him for eternity. He didn't say it that way, but that's how it is. Once he died on the cross for the world's sins and was risen from the dead on the third day, he ascended up to God Jehovah. And God Jehovah said, you are blessed, my son, your work now here on earth is finished. But he still came back a few more times. How many? I don't know. In the Bible, it says many. But it doesn't say exactly what he said all of, those, all of those times he was here. But it says enough about who he was as God, the Christ risen God from the dead, who died on the cross for the world's sins and was risen from the dead to be here with us one more time. And Christ God Jesus, our God and Savior alone and Creator alone, said to his disciples before he died on that cross, I'm going to send you a comforter. I will not leave you here as orphans. And his name is the Holy Spirit. That is in the Bible. And the context of everything I say has been said and written in some way in the Bible. Once we read the scriptures so much more close than we have before in our life, if you have ever been reading the Bible more and more and more, I pray you will. I pray and ask that in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. Listen to the words, read the words, and comfort your heart, mind, soul, and spirit to know you are saved by Christ God, Jesus alone. There is no other to worship. There is no other God. And remember, in the scripture I'm reading right now, from the beginning until the end, correctly right here, right now, all the words from the Bible, Matthew 25, 34, 
Then King Jesus will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. I love that right now. I love that scripture. I love the vision that comes into my mind and in my heart, knowing that when we are there, finally, after, after the return of God Jesus in the twinkling of the eye, we will be home in heaven just that quick. And not only that, one more thing. Mark 13, 32 and Matthew 24, 36 says that no one, not even the angels in heaven, not even the son knows that day or hour, only the father. Remember those scriptures. And there's another scripture with those two, which I, I found also in Matthew 25, 13. No one knows, not even the angels in heaven about that day or hour. Not even the Son, only the Father. That is Mark 13, 32, Matthew 24, 36, and Matthew 25, 13. If you read the scriptures, the word is in the proving of who we are as a child of God. The proof is in the word. And that proves to me and to many around us when I start talking to them about Christ God Jesus and they talk to me about Christ God Jesus, the word is here. If they say something out of, out of the ordinance or out of the scripture of God, I question what they are saying, I pray and ask God, Jesus, to help me to understand. And I always pray and ask that in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. And then he will help me to actually scripturally know it's true or false. What someone else is telling me about something in their faith that they believe about perhaps from a religion or faith they have had for a long time from childhood or just recently. Remember, there's a lot of cult religions out there. That means that the Antichrist is still going on strong in this world. And it's not going to stop. The only way it's going to stop is when our Savior, Christ God Jesus, comes into this world and says to someone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, to each and every one of us, who is God with, who is God with each and every one of us, tells them that you are wrong. Go into your heart. You know it's right. You know the truth. And every single person who has been created knows in their heart, mind, soul, and spirit that when they doubt God, when they say God that he doesn't exist or that Jesus Christ is not God, with God Jehovah in the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit with them as one living God alone, infinite, and then our God, Savior, and Creator alone as one in the presence of three, one living God, Savior, and Creator alone. Then if they doubt all of that, I'm going to continue to pray for these people in this world. You pray them for them if you know who they are and God will continually remind them to think about that. Maybe if no one is around them talking to them about God's truth, they don't want to hear it. So they stay away from people who do believe in Christ God Jesus and the word of God from the Bible alone. Remember, I'm not here to just put on a, a site just to say something about anything. I'm here to make a point because Christ God Jesus gave me this blessing. He blesses me with his words from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. And those words are simply mine to be when he tells me what to say and how to say them. I do my best and I say, thank you, God, Jesus, for helping me to do my best today. Thank you for helping me to give you my best all day today, tonight, at the end of this day. And thank you for helping me, helping me to improve my best from today going into tomorrow. Thank you, God, Jesus. I pray and ask this all in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. I pray you will pray this same prayer too. Know Jesus Christ is living God, Savior, and Creator alone because he is all living God, Creator, Savior, and Redeemer alone. But first, infinite God with great God Jehovah and God the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. They are three in the presence as one living God all alone. They bear witness as one in heaven. The Father, the Word, who became flesh and dwelt among us, and also the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say that, but it says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And they are one. Go back to the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3, and 14. Read it. Because the Word is God. The Word was with God and the Word was God. In verse 14 of chapter 1, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. There is no doubt in my heart, mind, soul, and spirit who God is, who created us. He didn't, we didn't come from one cell up to who we are now. We didn't split coming from an animal form, being human. God created us as man form first. He created us in the image of God. Read the Bible. That's in the Old Testament from the very beginning. And he created man in his own image. And then Jesus Christ, being the Word, who became flesh and dwelt among us, was here as a man in flesh, God in spirit. Think about these things. Praise God, Jesus, for all of them. Accept them. Invite God, Jesus, into your heart. 
mind, soul, and spirit right now as the only true living God, Savior, and Creator alone. And remember, the advice that I give people is all from Jesus Christ, my God and Savior. That's called wisdom. And I praise God Jesus for all of this blessed wisdom he has blessed me with. I pray for more, and I pray this country will have more to run this country better. I pray and ask this all in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. God bless. Have a wonderful day.